Hey, viewers. <laughs> a little bit different, right? Well, this review is a little bit different. Because with all my experience in FPS games, with all my experience in roguelike games, this game, this game was different. This game was a war. And, well, sometimes in war you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes you get scarred for life. And while Mother Gunship, yeah, it's sort of that third one. <sighs> but let's set the stage. Mother Gunship came out on July 17th, 2018 for the PC, Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4, and it cost $24.99. It's a hybrid FPS roguelike that has a unique mechanic the ability to construct your guns. Now, this is what drew me to the game. The idea of making my weapon and seeing how it would perform. I mean, sure, Dr. Evil put lasers on shark heads, but would that work when putting it on a minigun? How about four shotguns on top of one another? A quad shotgun? Would that work? That's what this game was really designed to find out. And let's face it, that's an interesting concept at the surface. But before I begin this review, I need to be straight with you from the get-go. When I label something a regular review, aka the review keyword, in almost 99% of cases, I have beaten the game. However, when I don't, I disclose that I haven't. I had to do that with Rodea the Sky Soldier due to its control problems. And I have to disclose it here because I haven't beaten this game either. Granted, I have 56.1 hours in the game, and I have experienced most of what the game has to offer in my mind. As I will reveal, there's a couple of reasons for why I didn't beat the game. I put as much effort to see everything in the game as I could, and really, to be honest with you guys, part of me wishes that I really hadn't. But enough talk. Let's get into things. Now, I could start in a lot of places talking about this game, but let me set up the basic premise with the story. You are a nameless soldier who wakes up with no idea where you are and who you are, and finding that you basically gotta save the universe from a powerful race of alien machine hybrids. Before you say anything, yep, you've heard this plotline before, and there's nothing too special about how Mother Gunship goes about this main plot. But hey, you should have expected that based on, well, I don't know, these tags on the Steam store. You're not playing the game for the plot. However, that doesn't mean that the plot isn't a net positive. The writing overall does well in what it sets out to do, to go for comedic punchlines based on the characters that are established here. The game plays well to the audience they are playing to as well, Understanding that they are fans of sci-fi and video games, and make sure to make a little reference here and there. The Colonel in particular stands out as a fun character, mixing the seriousness of a commander with the sliminess of a corrupt manager. Granted, if you were expecting the humor to work into the story nicely without feeling a little bit... random, well, that's not what Mother Gunship is. What's a little strange here is that I actually ended up wanting more story in the end, because while it's somewhat generic, it actually gives the game a dose of much needed character. There's only a few ways the game stands out in terms of something that screams, like I said, character. And surprisingly, it's these small characters and their interactions that actually do the job. They're fun, they are short, but work well, especially the elements that end up breaking the fourth wall. In a game of repetition and frustration, which I will go into by detail by the end of this, it would have been wise to use these elements more and more as the game went on. But come on, let's be clear, you ain't here for the story. 
for God's sakes, when did a first-person shooting roguelike ever focus on the story? No, you're here for the action. You're here for the guns. You're here for the gameplay. And what you'll come to find, like I have if you've played the game, is that if you look at it at the right angles, you'll see a fantastic game that shines with some of the best games in the indie community. But that's the right angle. No, not that right angle, but the right angle in which this view... Never mind. But any other angle, you may see... <laughs> you may see the game's darkness. The darkness that exists under its surface. <laughs> the ugliness that may consume you. That a almost consumed me. The basic structure of the game is as follows. You have a main set of story missions that you have to go through where you'll be able to bring a series of parts to help you out to try to get to the end of the level. Now you do have side missions that you can earn the experience, coin, and more additional parts to help you out. Most missions are primarily the same. Get to the end of a level to push a giant self-destruct button or the equivalent, which is one of my first real complaints about the game. The variety of the end missions needed a bit more, well, variety. But it's a little too early to dive into that. Let's start more with the basics, the controls and the weapons. Controls wise, aiming is in a good place, considering the different distance of targets that you have to fight at, and the base movement is fast enough that you can run circles around your enemies while still having to be a little bit accurate with your gun. In fact, I know that one of the game's upgrades is the movement speed one. And for anyone who is planning to play this game, I can't recommend the speed buffs. This has everything to do with the game's level design, which I'll get more into in a little bit. But at higher speeds, you literally keep on walking into pits of molten lava or traps. And yes, you can adjust to this over time, but it feels like the game is built for one speed. Now you do have other ways to deal with these pits, as the game gives you several jumps to begin with, up to five, and that's your main way of avoiding enemies. Your speed and your ability to jump multiple times in the air, regardless of what direction you're going in. Now, I'm actually somewhat impressed that it works as well as it does, especially considering the sheer amount of bullets that can be thrown your way. With no real dodge ability, and yes, you can strafe, the thing is, you almost feel like you would need some sort of roll or some sort of shield or something like that. But the fact is, everything fires at a specific angle and the amount of time which projectiles come at you, yeah, you can actually use your jumps to get around it. It is perfect for the kind of combat that Mother Gunship is going for. Okay, movement, running, dodging. Great, wonderful, I see this in other games. But guns, guns, guns. I know, I know, some may say that a fascination with guns may be unhealthy, but it is the primary draw of this game. Luckily, it's by far the best part of Mother Gunship, and there's no question in my mind of that. In fact, it may be the single one detail that kept me playing for as long as I did despite the fact that I ran into, how do I put them, issues. As mentioned in the intro, you can construct two guns in each runnable level. To make them, there are three base parts in the game. There's the base Lego blocks that you can construct the gun out of, there's the barrels in which you actually fire at enemies with, and then there's caps that enhance specific behaviors of the gun. Right off the bat, I like the variety that the game brings with the gun modules themselves on all three parts. You've got chain guns, lasers, shotguns of course, but you've also got some more unique flavors and things like the energy fireworks that bounce along the ground and hit the enemy, or these giant rolling lava balls. The enhancements do have typical damage buffs you would expect from a game like this with this sort of replaceable gun system, but here they go a lot further, like affecting the amount of pushback done with each firing, or even multiplying the number of projectiles that you fire. This is very similar to some of the special effects in Borderlands for some of the people who have played that game. This can lead to a lot of variety in the gameplay, 
as you have to play around certain elements or use them to your advantage. Take the pushback for example. Yes, it can be annoying if you play it in a forward momentum type of playstyle, rushing at enemies and then losing your velocity due to the pushback. But if you use it to move yourself backwards with that momentum, then all of a sudden you're speeding along, granted backwards, and you're able to dodge a lot more than you thought you could. <laughs> See, here's the thing about that. The balance behind these guns construction is what is inherently brilliant about Mother Gunship. You can't just slap four shotguns on top of each other and hope that everything works. There's a cost. Sometimes the cost is in energy per shot, meaning that you have to consider that, yeah, you can make that gun, but you may have to wait for a while before firing it again because it takes all the energy in one shot. But it's also more than that. The physical position of where you put the barrel makes a difference on how it fires in the screen. So you'll have to adjust to each new element that you add to it if you rearrange parts of the gun. There is so many things you have to consider when you put your gun together. Adding a shotgun with an energy blaster may make sense in your head until you realize that they are so off base from each other that when aiming, you're just basically not hitting something with one of the guns. Hell, that can apply to the positioning between both guns and your left and right arm, where you have to position yourself in such a way with one gun that your second gun also has to be able to hit that spot if you want to fire both guns at once. But you don't necessarily have to do that. You can focus on your right hand gun being a close range combat and maybe your left one will be your sniping weapon. There's a lot of options here. And that's the brilliance in how much detail that you need to apply to each construction. And sometimes the KISS principle is the best way to go, aka keep it simple stupid. Sometimes going over the top is also the best, and hell, you have to consider how much your gun takes up the screen with its model, as it can legitimately get in your way if you build it wrong. Now to completely break the fourth wall, you probably are sitting here and going, wait a minute, you sort of implied that this game was going to be war or hell or anything like that. So to hear this saying that it may be one of the best options in the game, that's a little bit weird. And let me put it this way. If the game kept the quality of the gun system for the rest of the systems in the game, the game would be the game of the year. By far. It would probably be one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> but it wouldn't be that easy now, would it? No, 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 no. It can't be that easy in the world of Dragnex. Okay, so let's hit some of the other things. In terms of the rooms in the game, this is where the game starts to lack. You have your typical enemy rooms and you have gamble rooms, which basically give you four times the amount of items within it. Not sure how it's a gamble, but okay, sure. But really, the biggest variance has to do with the challenge rooms which have some good variation in challenges, like not trying to hit your enemies for a period of time, or not using your left hand gun for X amount of seconds. Certain places, that actually becomes a challenge. You'd think, okay, I don't want to kill any enemies in this room, so I won't fire my weapons. But then you have these enemies that float at you that will actually blow up if you're close to them, so you actually have to really focus on that. Yeah, these were good. However, after about 10 hours or so, you've seen them way too many times for them to be effective. I wanted the game to go a little bit outside the box in these challenge rooms and hell, add more rooms in general. In fact, what's weird is that at one point, there was a ship that had a more platforming challenge as the entire ship was filled with spikes that would go up and down. I went through that and I failed, but I was sitting there going, wait a minute, this entire ship is the spikes. Why couldn't some of these other little ships, the ones that I had to go through, have this as a room and make it so it's a perfect change of pace for the combat? Welcome to Mother Gunship, one of the strangest combination of straightforward game elements that I've seen in a while that doesn't apply its own content well to itself. Like, take the AI for instance. The AI is bad, and bad in the wrong type of way for a game like this. Okay, AI being bad, that's never a good thing, right Dragnix? No, I'd say far from it. 
AI can be bad, where you can do literally do circles around the enemy with no problems. For a game with a roguelike element to it, you actually want your AI to be somewhat exploitable in certain ways because of what the gameplay is trying to do. It wants you to get through these challenges over time, through repetition, and use everything to your advantage, including the AI. You want them to be a little bit weaker. You don't want them to be this huge challenge and then have to face this next huge challenge in the next room because you're not gonna get through that. You're gonna be frustrated and then you're just gonna want to leave. But when the AI is having trouble performing their AI actions, such as running up this slope, I question the implementation. Or hell, when the AI is so bad that I literally can't find an enemy that's trying to kill me because it's stuck in the ceiling trying to find me. Yeah, that's when the AI goes a little bit too far and it needed a little bit of an adjustment in order to avoid these really weird and bad scenarios. Which leads to the level design. And yes, I understand that in certain cases, procedural generation isn't going to work. Now, it does work for games like Ziggurat. Yeah, it may be improvable, but overall, I didn't feel like I was going through the same room over and over again in that game, especially five hours in. Unfortunately for Mother Gunship, it became really apparent that, yeah, there's only like 15 or 20 or 25 base rooms, and you're gonna see them a lot. Now, yes, repetition. I understand that is something that I just complain about. And yes, I understand that you want some exploitable elements to it. But when you're getting to around hour 30, hour 40, or hour 50 in the game, and you've seen the exact same room and realize that, oh, I'm going to die in this room because of its construction, that's where you run into problems. The randomization in this game is the problem. I have talked about roguelikes and randomization before. You want some randomization because you want things to feel fresh upon run upon run upon run. But what you want is controlled randomization. You want fair randomization. There are times in this game where it basically tells you to screw off. The big problem there is that Simple changes within the game's structure could have prevented many of these situations, and the fact is, I'm wondering why they weren't done that way. For example, the idea of an enemy that shields other enemies in the game, that's a really good idea. It adds a layer of strategy and a focus that you need to work around from the player's point of view. Here's the problem though with Mother Gunship's version. See the radius of this dome that surrounds the area compared to the size of the other enemies that it protects? It is way too freaking small. I mean, just look at this. Look at how much this one turret takes up of the shield. Now, the problem is, is that in order to destroy the shield itself, and you may have to do that in certain rooms, you have to get really, really close to the shield. And unfortunately, it's to the point where you can't react to shots from many of the enemies you find in there if they spawned a certain type. Sure, these laser types here, yeah, I can get around them just easy, but these turret types with the explosive rounds? No, I can't get around those. In fact, I'm gonna take damage. Yeah, I can jump around like a Mexican jumping bean, but it's not gonna matter. I'm going to get hit because it's so close, it literally explodes as I'm in the circle. Which means that if I can avoid it, I will. And the problem is, is that the only time you have to kill enemies is to get the coins to get upgrades in the level that you're fighting in or when certain rooms have a particular challenge element that has to be beaten. Now, if you're trying to conserve your health, there's no reason to even try these hard sections at times. And it sucks because that means you're not engaging in some of the best parts of Mother Gunship, your gun usage. So now you have to play this weird back and forth game and I feel like there was a better solution to this. There are so many weird decisions and implementation questions that I have about this game. Look, I get it, Mother Gunship is trying to be different and therefore its secrets are different, for example. But remember how games like Doom would cleverly hide secrets in places randomly along its constructed path? 
Hell, games with procedural generation would hide them behind cracks in the wall, typically in the roguelike genre. Well, Mother Gunship has an indication too. It's a blue light that appears on the circuit when you're close to it, depending on your upgrades. Oh, but if you don't have that bit of upgrades, you have to be really close. Like dragging your body along the wall close. Hell, even with the upgrades, you really couldn't see it from a distance. You had to be close to it. It's weird. If you were watching me play this game within the game itself as someone on the sidelines, I had to look like one of the stupidest people looking for these secrets on the face of the planet. Why? That's the question I ask myself with an implementation like this. I asked myself over and over again in the 20th hour, the 30th hour, the 40th hour of this game, why the hell did they do it that way? The thing is, I've always talked about how each mechanic in a game should work in unison with the next. Some of the best games out there have elements that in other games would be poor, but in combination with everything else in that particular game, they end up being perfect for it. Resident Evil, for example. The tank-like controls of the original game, for any other game in that genre in that time, not the genre of third-person shooter, but the third-person survival horror shooter, it would have been a problem. But for that game, for the horror elements that it went for, it was perfect. For me, Mother Gunship is the antithesis of synergy. In a vacuum, several of these decisions make a lot of sense by themselves and are good mechanics. But not enough attention was paid on how things should work together. And that's where Mother Gunship is at its worst. It's absolute worse. Where this is seen the most is when your frustration factor kicks in. And oh boy, does it kick in at the end of the game. In order to unlock the final stage of the game, you have to beat six levels in a row, randomized, without dying to unlock the final level within that ship. Now, this could be a variety of different challenges. You could be forced to use weapons that you're not used to. You could be forced to bring around parts that you may not necessarily want to bring. But you know what? Fine. Different challenges. Great. Whatever. The thing is, you have to beat the six levels in a row without dying. You die in any of them, you have to start on another ship and go through those six levels again randomized. Now, with all I just mentioned about the frustration factors and how one bad situation can end up screwing you over, having this requirement at the end game is absolutely devastating. And hell, I haven't even talked about the biggest one right now. These guys. These explosive enemies. Don't seem too bad, right? <laughs> just your typical floating, exploding enemies that explode where you're near them. I mean, we've seen that in games before. But <laughs> no, 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 not in Mother Gunship. Let me just play a sample clip for you of one of my failed runs and see if you can spot what is so devastating and wrong about these enemies. Now, you may go, Tragnix, you probably took that context out of this clip. So there's a bug there, or you took out the audio, right? Nope. Those enemies are silent up until you get into the range where they arm, and then they start beeping. The big problem here is that if you just so happen to jump into their radius, you're screwed. Because you're going backwards, and then you find the beeping. So, of course, you either go back more into more of them because they come in piles, or you try to go forward. But you've lost momentum at that point, and therefore, you're not going to get out in time. So you'll be hit with explosion after explosion after explosion. <laughs> with no indication that they were ever there. I died multiple times to this scenario, and it drove me freaking insane. I basically had to become a tinfoil hat wearing player, 
looking around every nook and cranny, regardless of what information in-game was telling me. And that's the failure. The fact is, the information in-game did not give me the tools to succeed. And hell, even if it did, there are certain scenarios in which it spawns these enemies on top of you in a small crowded room or somewhere where you really can't move. You just enter the place and then all of a sudden explosion enemies. The fact is, yeah, I get it. Roguelikes are hard. Rogue lights are hard, even if they're a little bit more lenient. But again, you expect a level of fairness. Yeah, you're going to die because of some bad luck. But if the bad luck seems to happen over and over and over again, you wonder if the dice are weighted. And with Mother Gunship, <laughs> these dice are fucking weighted. You know what the sad part is? I didn't even get to other elements that I wanted to talk about. Like the bosses. The bosses are fantastic, even though there's only like three or four of them. They're great in size, they have some interesting challenges at times, like running along this huge corridor, but I've spent 22 minutes almost on this section in this section alone, and I have to talk about other things in this game. So let me put it in ways that you can understand. Mother Gunship's gameplay is a set of wonderful features at times that don't belong together. It's like you were to put Donald Trump and Oprah Winfrey in the same room and ask them to come to a same conclusion. I mean, you could put them and lock them in there for as long as you want, but they're not going to. They're two completely different people. And that's the point. They don't work together. Just like several of these gameplay features don't work together within itself. Look, for all the complaining that I've done about Mother Gunship, I'll give credit where credit is due. The PC version is reasonable when it comes to its options and its technical elements. Let's start in a pretty key area, the performance. And while it may not be the top of the line compared to other FPX experiences on the PC, it's still pretty rock solid, especially for an indie game. With my specs that you can see here, I could easily get 4K and 60 FPS with no problems on the PC. But that's with VSync on. When turned off, I could get anywhere between 80 and 100 FPS, depending on what was going on in the background. Now, it did take a while for me to get used to the game at that frame rate, as at times, the change in frame rate would cause me to feel sick with specific colors, in particular when the lava was involved. But that did eventually subside. Now, if you're a console player, know that it really is dependent on what console you're playing on. If you're on the PS4 Pro, from my understanding, you're gonna get close to the 60 FPS. If you're on the Xbox One or the PS4, however, you will dip to around 40 or 50 FPS depending on what is going on in the background, as I mentioned before. As for bugs and crashes, this is where things get complicated. There was one crash that took out a run, and that caused me to lose progress in the run. Unfortunately for this game, it was on the aforementioned 6th level completion. Here's the problem. It got under my skin so much that I failed because of that, that this is where I officially tapped out of the game. Look, bugs happen, crashes happen, and I realized that, and it was just some bad timing on this game's part. But with the issues regarding the endgame that I mentioned earlier, along with this circumstances, my tolerance, I just couldn't take it anymore. But moving on, where Mother Gunship shines technically is the options menu. Starting control-wise, you have full control of the X and Y axis sensitivity for both the mouse and the controller, with mouse smoothing and inversion of the Y axis available. Actually, while I'm here, let me mention the keyboard versus the controller controls. Look, it's an FPS, and yes, the controller does work for those people who are playing on the PS4, who are playing on the Xbox One, or who have hand problems, thus they want to play with the controller on the PC. But it's an FPS. A keyboard and mouse is designed for an FPS. So yeah, use the keyboard. 
As for your graphics options, I'm rather impressed. I mean, I could just show you this screen. The fact that the resolutions go up to 4K and the frame rate going up to 120 and unlimited, and an FOV slider that, well, really does the job to say the least. You've got enough other options here with things like anti-aliasing options, quality control over the effects, the materials, and the textures, and even lens flare to really help customize your experience to your rig. To be frank, going into this, I did not expect this level of graphic options, and it came as a really nice surprise. In addition, you have dynamic crosshairs and control over eight languages in total. And I also do like the options for the HUD pickup and hurt flashes because, yeah, the screen shake was a little bit annoying at times, but those in particular ended up causing me problems while I was playing, so it was nice to have the ability to turn them off. For sound sliders, I do like you have individual control over pretty much everything, including the UI, which was a nice surprise. So no complaints there. And having bindable keys for pretty much everything was a nice cherry on top. Overall, technically the game is rather sound for the price tag, and frankly is one of the biggest strengths in the game. So yeah, no knockoff Legos here, just solid building blocks all around. <sighs> I feel drained. This fight has been such a long and tedious battle with this review, <laughs> but I'm a professional, right? A good soldier, the consummate professional. <laughs> so fine, let's talk a little bit about the game's presentation. For me, like almost all the other elements in this game, it's once again a mixed bag. So much so that I had to bust a thesaurus as I wrote the term mixed bag over and over again, then decided that, well, wait a minute, mixed bag perfectly describes everything. So yeah, I have used it over and over again. On one hand, there's some good combinations of the super metal structures you have to work through. Having one ship with cool colors that give this vibe a spooky tech overlook. Or a reasonable yellow that gives the ship what I can only describe as this sort of modern look. Yeah, I know it's not a modern design specifically, but the yellow just gives it a feel of new and slick with the way that it is presented. But to be quite honest, some of the enemy designs just doesn't do it for me. I mean, this is a futuristic AI that wants precision over everything else, but you can still be creative with it. Like the Hawks, for example, don't really have flair on them. It feels like it needs a little bit more to it. And while things like the circular turret works here, the more basic turrets and this nine set turret feel almost not lazy per se, but too straightforward. The only time I was really wowed was the sheer size of a boss, but that was so few and far between, it didn't even really matter in the big picture. But I flip it around again and say that the gun models are a huge positive here, especially because the way you build a gun shows in your gun model. The angles of parts and how they combine together somehow to make reasonable gun configurations that actually look as usable as they are in game is somewhat surprising. At certain points, yes, I moved around parts to make the gun look cooler, and that's really cool to see. But then I flip it around again because there's some effects here that really don't do the job. This energy gun's output is really hard to see when you're firing in the middle of battle, especially in areas where there are blue walls all over the place. Certain projectiles become hard to see regardless, like saw blades. And while yes, you do get the equivalent of hit markers with damage numbers appearing over enemies, it can be hard at times to see which of your guns have been hitting them. Now, there are some exceptions here. The big chain launching thing, you know, this huge ball with spikes on it. Yeah, that had a good effect, especially with numbers. And the lava rolling balls, yeah, they had a specific kind of impact on you, aka oomph. But things like the shotgun, yeah, it worked at times, but especially at longer range, it was really hard to see whether or not you were actually doing damage with it other than the numbers, as I mentioned before. Actually, let me add on to that. Some of these presentation elements didn't really work for me in terms of the overall picture. Like, 
I get the cracking on the screen when you get hit with an attack, and they tried to make the effect realistic as opposed to a red blood hitting the screen. But every time it happened, there is this weird visual effect that makes me feel a tiny bit sick, whether it be the crack or the little jump of the screen. Now, like I said before, you can turn that off, but I felt like there was something more needed in this area if you were going to turn this option on. As for sound, I know that I've been relatively bitchy during this review, but of all the elements here, this may be the one that pisses me off the most because it does the most damage to not only the gameplay, but the presentation as a whole. I'm not a fan of any of the sound design, in fact. Enemies can easily sneak up on you, like the aforementioned exploding enemies, where it's really hard to even hear their warning beeps until it's far too late. Most sounds in the game for me lack oomph. It lacks any sort of lasting impact. Yeah, I want to hear a shotgun hit the enemy. I want to hear that laser beam across the way, but here, they just don't do much of anything. In fact, playing with the sound off for periods yield no worse results, and that's how lacking in impact it was on the game. <laughs> just listen to what I'm talking about here, and you'll understand exactly what I mean. Music-wise, while I like the use of the guitar in the main theme, I realized that I didn't really have that many notes on the music. So I went back and listened to the level music to remember exactly what it sounded like, and yeah, that made sense why. It should tell you that the music doesn't really have an impact and is relatively generic. In fact, I forgot about it. Just listen. The one strength of any sort of music sound or whatnot was the voice acting. Yeah, the voice acting wasn't necessarily the greatest, but some of the emotion put into some of the performances, especially the Colonel, as I mentioned in the story section, they definitely did work. And I really wanted to see more of it. What's weird is that even though I haven't played the game in a while, for some reason, it reminded me of You Don't Know Jack. And yeah, I know, that's a really old game and really different style, but it was the voice where it had this sort of comical element to it, but still yet a serious tone to it. Just take a listen to some samples and hear what I'm talking about. Turrets in the next room. Punch them in the face parts, or anywhere really, just punch them. Okay. And if you die, you'll lose all the gun parts you have taken with you. Avoid that. Now, as much as I'd like to, we can't just waltz over to the mother gunship. It's usually cloaked and shielded. Luckily, Wilkinson thinks she's got the answer to that. Most archivist ships have a data core at their heart. 
If I can get my hands on one of those data cores, then maybe I can crack it for information. Your mission? We need intel about getting more intel about getting intel about cloaking. Get onto that ship, get the data core. Good luck. I've cut off Hylas's speed, Colonel. At least for now. Thanks, Wilkinson. Hylas used to care about the Earth and saving it from the aliens. Now he just cares about publicity moments and scoring paid endorsements. Remember, flight squadrons don't make you cool. That's what sunglasses are for. And leather jackets. We're all on the same side, Colonel. So overall, the presentation is very hit and miss. The sound whiffed horribly. And even though there are some good designs here and there are some good voice acting performances, I would put the presentation on the lower end of the scale. Yeah, there were some impressive visuals at times, but when it came to working with gameplay, when it came to working with story, that's where it fell apart. And sadly, I do consider that when I'm looking at a game, because they should work in unison. <sighs> Look, some reviewers hate playing bad games. Some reviewers hate playing games that everyone raves about. But my particular kryptonite when it comes to reviewing games is a game like Mother Gunship. One that has a few really, really solid or fantastic elements and a really unique mechanic that not many other games have in the FPS gun construction. But with all those strengths come a lot of weaknesses. And the thing is, it's really hard analyzing and isolating one great strength and a bunch of weaknesses especially the way Mother Gunship is. I've always thought of a game as an intricate puzzle, and the problem with Mother Gunship is simple. It's a set of puzzle pieces that a person has jammed together that don't actually fit in their assigned spots. There are pieces here that don't even belong to the puzzle that's being made, and the person putting together the puzzle just sort of gave up after he tried to cut a corner and pasted a poster on top of it. <laughs> That's the sad thing here. There's still the essence of a beautiful picture the puzzle is trying to make here. You can see the artwork and the craftsmanship. That's the essence of what you'd want from the puzzle. It's something that could really work. It could. But you know what is the only thing that I can think of when I look at this game? I mean, look, Mother Gunship is not a bad game. It really isn't. But all I could think of when I stopped playing is how if the game went down a different path, it would have been utterly fantastic, maybe a top three games of the year. And there is a reason why I gave such a strong disclaimer at the start of this review. As you've probably heard throughout this review, I've gotten a little bit emotional about it. Trying to be fully objective became incredibly hard when your frustrations start to flood into you every time you play. It's one of the hardest games I've had to score because if you're able to ignore its faults, you'll have a ton of fun. If you can't, you'll have fun for a bit, but then you'll drop into the pit of despair. Oh, hey, Monokuma. When you get killed for yet another reason that seems outside of your control. I can't recommend the game for the torture that it put me through. You expect torture from a game with a roguelike tag, don't get me wrong, but you expect the game to be fair about its difficulty. And that's where I think the game fails. When I was killed, more often than not, I felt it was the game's fault more than my own weaknesses. If that was fixed to some point, the game would definitely be worth a relook. But until then, it only earns a 63 out of 100, making it a deep sale title, but nothing more. But like I've made perfectly clear, this game has a lot of elements that are going to be specific to maybe your tastes, more than a lot of games, especially within the FPS genre. But don't worry, that's why I have my enhancer system, which tries to take the more subjective elements of games and put them in score form. If you fall into one of these categories, add or subtract the enhancers to the base score. If the first digit of your final score changes, 
then refer to this chart or the description below to see where the game now lies for you in buyability. Needless to say, <laughs> there's a lot to process here. And frankly, there's a ton of subjective elements to mother gunship in my mind. <sighs> I'm finally done with this game. I'm finally done. Uh, look, I'm tired, guys. This review took a lot out of me. I mean, the fact is, it's why you didn't get content over the last several weeks. But luckily for you, you're getting a nefarious review next week for the Switch. In the meanwhile, <laughs> I'm just going to rest and hope that I don't turn around into another fucking bomb. <sighs>